Teresa, are you ready? I am. Sister friends, are you ready? We are. That's right. It's time for a cup of soul where wisdom is dropped, truth is shared, and there's enough love for a second helping. And that, sister friends, that second helping is for you. And you. And, and you. you. And brother friends, if you're listening, that second helping's for you too. Yes. Yes. Let's get ready to fill those cups up. Mm-hmm. Before, let's jam a little bit though. Yes, I love the music. I don't know about you guys, but it just gets me all pumped up when we listen to it. Yes, it does. All righty. <laughs> Welcome to A Cup of Soul. We are back. And before we begin, I just want to thank you for joining us in this new episode of Cup of Soul, and as well as supporting and sharing, because that is the only way it gets out there. And we get to be a part of sharing the gospel. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Mm-hmm. So let's Amen. jump in. And I'm going to pass it over to Candace. All right. We've got three questions this week. Well, two questions in a, in a comment. The first one is, what is a fable, fable, no, no, let's start over, a favorite local restaurant? Like, What's your favorite local restaurant where you're at? I know we've got lots of San Diego sister friends, so I'd love to hear where you guys like to go. But even where you are, what's your favorite local restaurant? And what do you like to get when you're there? Candace. She's rolling her eyes at me. You can't see it, but she's rolling her eyes at me. So, Candace. Yes. You know me pretty well. What's my favorite local restaurant? I don't think you have a favorite local restaurant as long as there's hamburgers. You got it. Like you took the words out of my mouth. Right. I don't think there's an actual place as long. No, I mean, there's some places you don't like hamburgers, but as long as they've got a good Hamburger, like you're good. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see for Candace, what would I say? <sighs> Candace always goes for like chicken nuggets or pasta. Not together. No, not together. But separate. Yeah. She's right about that, y'all. It's pretty simple. I am the opposite. If there was a word for opposite of foodie, that would be me. Mm-hmm. So where would you go? I was going to say, like, BJ's, because they, their chicken's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Play it safe. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, kind of the same thing. As long as they've got a pasta dish or, like, a chicken sandwich, I'm all right. Yeah, and it's not a complicated pasta dish. No. <laughs> nope. Not at all. Yep. See, we be stalking each other. Ain't that sad? Right. <laughs> and this is how you know your sister and they know mm-hmm. what you like. Like you could never take Teresa and I to some like whoo. Yeah, booty, I'm not fancy. fancy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I noticed this about Elsa, because we kind of hang too on the other side. But Elsa likes sub sandwiches she's safe and healthy okay okay <laughs> but I, i'll be watching i'll be watching her too <laughs> i love it yes. the three non-foodies right. for it. real for real very simple I love, I love it all right question number two okay what is the best knock knock joke you know knock 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 yes knock. <laughs> i know knock knock Who's there? Who, who's there? Who? <laughs> that is not a, what, y'all. Help your sister friend. Pray for her. I guess I got to get on the school about some knock-knock. All okay, right, what's so that's yours? your homework. Your homework is to come back next week with a knock-knock joke. Are you ready for mine? I'll forget. Go for it. Okay. Knock-knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow? 
What? <laughs> Get it? I said interrupting cow. And as you talked, I said moo because I was an interrupting cow. No? Oh, God, it's the best knockdown joke I know. Okay, I just got one really quick. You read it? No. Okay. Candace. Did not get that one at oh, all. Help us, did you help say? Me out, y'all. Did you say good. worst or best? Okay, no. Oh, okay, knock man. knock. Who's there? Weekend. Weekend who? Weekend do anything we want. No, that was not okay. We both aren't great at this. That's fine. One more. One more. One more. All knock, right. Knock knock. Who's there? I said, who's there? Goat. Goat who? Goat to the door and find out. (laughs) (gasps) Stop it. (laughs) Stop it. All right, I'll give you credit for that one. That was better than the first one. But my interrupting cow one, you guys, it was good. Okay, do it one more time. Okay, knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow? Moo. See, I interrupted you. I was the interrupting cow. Moo. Ooh, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Whatever. Good one. It's classic. I yes, it. it is great. Y'all vote. It's great. Just give her a gold star. Mm-hmm. We want to hear your knock-knock jokes, ladies. Gotta have a little laughter. And then the last question. This one's easy. What's your worship song you've been jamming on lately? Just one. You know, I got hooked on last Tuesday night. Over and over. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Yep. Over and over. That is a good one. I went for a walk the other day, and I don't know how it popped up, but um, Sing Because I'm Happy came up, Mm. and man, did the tears fall. I don't even know why. I was fine before it came on, Mm. but... I don't know, and it's just been so. I threw that in this this last couple of days, this last week. It is just it makes you smile when you hear it. Yeah. So, oh, well, that was one of the ones you I forgot about. Yeah. So, all right, ladies, let us know what you're jamming on this week. Your worship song. All right, and that's all. That's it. That's it. Just three simple ones this week. Mm. All right, so I get to ask my question. And mm-hmm. it's about the lovely mug. Did you go mug shopping this week, Candace? I did, and I was I was disappointed again. So I took your guys' advice and I went to Etsy. Mm-hmm. And I found these, they're actually bridesmaids mugs. Mm-hmm. They have like the your birth flower on them. Like they're they're clear. I like the glass look. So it's clear, it's very dainty, it has the black flowers for April, I got to pick my birthday month, but you can put names on them. So I messaged her and said, I don't want a name, can you put the word release and then my verse underneath? And she was like, absolutely. So I ordered it. (gasps) You gotta send me a picture. Okay. It's one of the, you know, the clear, like our chosen mug. Mm -hmm. It's clear like that, but it's not round. It's your typical glass shape. Mm -hmm. And you can, you get to choose the bouquet of flowers on it. You get to choose your birth month. So my April are daisies. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a sketch, a black pencil sketch of daisies. And then it'll say release. And then my verse is uh, Matthew 16, 19. So it'll say Matthew 16, 19 underneath it. Yeah. I, I can't see that. So Yeah. That sounds cool, though. Yes. So I ordered a mug. I didn't find one in the store, but I ordered one. Yes. Well, I went over to Etsy, too. We were talking about faith, and I just didn't have this mug that had the word faith on it. So I think it's in the mailbox. Like, you know, I got the thing on my phone today that I got mail. Mm. So I need to, I didn't go to the mailbox before I came home, so I need to go to the box and see what I got. But I did. Okay. I ordered a mug that I kind of sort of forgot about. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. But I think that's it. I didn't buy any other mugs to my knowledge. No, that was it. <laughs> yeah. I went looking, but no. Yeah, it's no. getting very scary out there on mugs. Yeah. Like, they're just not there. 
All right, I need to find another store that has mugs in it, and I just I haven't found that store. Right. So, yeah. All righty. We are getting ready to jump into Cup of Soul, the good stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we have been talking about faith, that we walk by faith, not by sight. Um, what is literally like faith playing out in our lives. And I don't know about you guys and everyone who's been tuning in, you know, just what we've learned through faith and talking. And, and I, I hope that you've learned through our journey what we've been studying more about faith and our walk with faith. But I think it was last week, Candace, where we did one on the Instagram Live when it pretty much just was like um, earth-shattering news that our faith doesn't have to be big it all he requires us to have is faith as large as a mustard seed and he mm -hmm. is god mm -hmm. and that's going to be victorious and i just that was just like music to my ears that i don't have to mm -hmm. try to grow faith because i cannot grow faith just like i personally can't grow a mustard seed tree probably could if i work at it but that's not what he's asked me to grow. So Amen. it's him. So let me pray us in so we can dig in. Lord, I thank you for another week. I thank you, Lord, that you're at the table and we welcome the Holy Spirit here to guide us as we begin this podcast. I thank you for keeping us another week and I thank you for just so much revelation, so much conviction and just want to praise you more as we study your word lord and tonight i just want to thank you that we can stand firm right now knowing that all battles belong to you and you are so capable of handling the battle so i declare now that my victory and candace's victory and whomever is listening will not depend on our own abilities or skills or the tools or the resources that we have but our victory, our victoriousness through the seasons, the ones that we're in right now is because we have a savior. We have a savior who is right there with us and not only a savior, but he's given us the Holy Spirit to be with us in the battle, to guide us wisely and even to say this battle is his. So Lord, I thank you. I thank you for fighting on our behalf, Lord. And may your name be known amongst the nations as one of the most amazing gods. As we said yesterday, a good, good God. May that be what it be, that our life just radiate that we serve and have a good, good God in our lives, Lord. And that our lives glorify you. So I thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I was about to go on a roll. Like, I was almost forgetting that I was just praying a prayer and it was going to be the whole podcast. You know, like, just, <laughs> I was talking to Jesus there for a moment. Amen. Uh, so, um, as we dig in, we're going to be talking tonight about the battle. The, um, the battle that we're in. Even just how our faith is calling us to walk out the battle. But that's not the name of it. It is that we walk by faith, not by sight, facing battles, facing the giants. And I'll start off with this question before we go anywhere. And as we go through this, the main thing is this. What giants do you have in your life that you're afraid to confront? And we want to confront them today. That's what we want to do. And so if we dig into this, we're in 1 Samuel 17, 39 through 50 and um, it goes into about the battle but the battle I want to talk to you mostly about is um, is really what battle are you facing that has the best of you maybe it's a health issue maybe it is a relationship issue maybe it's a marriage issue like really think about it Life is full of opportunities to do battles on the behalf of the Lord and to engage with fear in a spiritual um, way. Like if you really think about it, we engage with fear. You got to engage with fear. Um, I think so many times we'll try to push it away or we've learned in scripture, fear don't live here. But there's an engagement with fear. 
And that fear, I, you know, I think the fear that we have and almost like the level of fear that we have, if I'm saying this right, also shows our growth. Mm-hmm. Because there's one time you, you might have that fear where you can't even get out the house. It's stifling. But you slowly are stepping out. So you're engaging with the fear in a spiritual way, even waiting for it to happen, even waiting for the spirit to flush out the fears and to feed it with faith, literally. I'm going to give you even anger. Anger is always there. It's always sitting there in the battle waiting. And same thing, that growth that we have is is literally the flushing it out. And you got to engage with the anger. You mm-hmm. got to, I think, even with even with faith, you got to engage with um, some forgiveness because we walk in that unforgiveness and it kind of like sit there and, and literally, how do you engage even even with that? And I kind of like just threw that in because um, sometimes that forgiveness piece is we have someone who hurts us and we're waiting for the healing, right? And that honestly mm-hmm. can be a battle because you're waiting for that person who assaulted you to come and apologize, to come and make it better. Or sometimes we we waiting for them to fall. Let's just be honest. Uh, <laughs> we're just like sitting back waiting for them to fall. Also, I think pride is lurking to prounce on us strongly, literally, like the pride that we have. And sometimes that's the battle. So it's fear, it's anger, it could be pride, it could be health, it could be relationships. Like there's so much out there. And if we're going to face our fears, if we're literally going to face our fears, we really have to think about how do we face our fears and what do we do? Candace, can you think of any other fears that we could be facing or that we're engaging with that we don't even want to engage with? I would say like loneliness, rejection, comparison, because it's all, maybe they're rooted in fear. I was, Mm -hmm. when you were explaining them, I was thinking of the interconnectedness of them all. Mm -hmm. But I think that can be a giant in the sense of we don't want to deal with it, right? No one is like, yay, let me get up and deal with this giant. But I think it can, it can stifle us, like you said but or we can look at it and see how far we've grown in spite of it Mm -hmm. you know and especially just with the world that we have with like even with the the way technology is i think loneliness is a big one um and isolation is is a big giant Mm -hmm. well i think of this scripture right here and it's first samuel and you may have another translation two of this canis but it's first samuel 17 47 and it says the Lord does not deliver by sword or spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give give you into our hand so to me that is saying the enemy of God will be brought down by God mm-hmm. all those enemies will be brought down all those things that we're facing will be brought down that's when we cry out to the ultimate healer, Jesus. Literally cry out to him. This is God's battle. Our faith journey and things that we face, it's God's battle. Mm-hmm. In life, we're confronted by so many giants of some point, some circumstance, some situation. And they, they may seem to hover over us and then insult our fear insecurity it even may be shame Mm -hmm. embarrassment guilt Mm -hmm. of the story Mm -hmm. there may be a difficult problem there may be a challenge there may be a trial that's intimidating to us to make us crawl back and want to hide in a hole has anybody ever been there were you trying to walk Mm -hmm. out faith and let me just get back in the hole and be real that we become afraid. Afraid to step out, afraid to face that giant. But you see, until we confront the giant, it, if we don't confront the giant, you know what the giant is doing, right? 
keeping us down. Yes, defeating us. Defeating, yeah. But what I read is the enemy will be brought down by God. It'll be brought down by God. So let's go to the story of David and the giant, Goliath, who was intim- who intimidated God's people, made them tremble with fear. And we can be a, we can team we can learn from a, a few lessons from David that we need to face our giants. Do you again have a giant that you need to face? And are you running? I'm gonna say hiding? yes. Everybody yeah. should say yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't. That's nothing wrong with. I think. I think in this journey of walking with the Lord, somewhere out there, everybody somewhere another. Think or someone has told them, or the example they've been looking at and comparing with was that you got to have it all perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're a Christian, you got a perfect life and there can't be no problems in my life because I'm a Christian. Mm. That's a lie. Right? Is that what I mean, even think about how giants are, I was thinking about fairy tales, right? When you were talking. Mm-hmm. Because even even as little kids, giants are these big bad things. Mm-hmm. These big bad, you know, you're afraid of the giant. The giant's bigger than you. It's more powerful than you. And and you have to be good in order for the giant to go away. Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, well, duh. That's us. We can feed into something and create the power of the giant over us and not mm-hmm. even realize that we're doing it. Yeah. And that's crazy because we have the power of God. We have the faithfulness of him to be able to look at that giant and be like, no, not that you're not real or not. I'm not going through something, but you're not big and bad and you don't get to win this one. Yeah. Well, I mean, even Candace, when we read first Samuel 17, 46 through 47, Will you pick a translation? I'm going to read this one. I have the NASB, and you pick another one so we can okay. give it clear. 46 and 47. This day is the Lord will deliver you up into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from you, and you give the dead body to the army of the Philistines. This day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all of this assembly will be made known that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Mm. I'm reading out of the Amplified. <clears throat> it says, this day the Lord will hand you over to me and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that this entire assembly may know that the Lord does not save with the sword or with the spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will hand you over to us. Yeah. Yeah. But let's go back for a minute. Girl, he's talking about decapitation while animals eating dead Philistines. Right. I just, you just, you, like. But aren't battles gruesome? <laughs> yeah. Nobody walks out, like, the winners don't walk out without any scratches, without any scratches on them. And the losers, you don't walk out. Yeah, I just, like, David, he just had to make that point that just, just in case. Y'all want to know how the fight going down? It's going to be decapitated. Right. Let's right. cut so it you, off at the head. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because you, you can't come back from that. Mm-mm. Oh, no. And you're this, not popping up. You're not but, popping no, up. No, you're not coming back. You're not going to be like, See, I'm not dead. No, gone. Decapitated and a wild animal is going to eat the dead Philistines. That's what it says. Mm-hmm. But okay, for real. 
the victory will be shown to the world that the Lord is God of Israel and that he is alive and he's mighty and he's unrestrained. So, literally, there was another verse where Jonathan says, God's deliverance is not limited by number. And here David points out that the weapon we carry does not matter. And sometimes the weapon we carry is our mouth. Oof. Sometimes it's our brains that we got all this stinking thinking up there. It is. Oh, yeah. We can talk our selves in and out of a situation 30 seconds flat. Oh, in it deep. Yeah. In and out of a situation. And it's, <clears throat> we've shared this before, even just the way that our brains are wired. We hold on to negativity a lot faster and for longer than we hold on to the positive. Right. Um, the word, yeah, we're just wired that way. But what if you took that and you switched it? And like he says in this verse, the battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord and he's going to hand him over to you. Mm -hmm. Like in order for something to be handed over to you, I think one, how close God has to be to me to put something in my hand. He's not oh, like lobbing that. it across the football field. He's not, you know what I mean? In my mind, he has to be so, he has to be next to me to take something and put it in my hand. And here he is handing the thing over to me that was supposed to take me out. I like that. He's got to be close. Only he's got to be close. It can't happen any other way. So that thing that giant I'm again we're not saying that it's not real. Things we're going to go through stuff. We all got to think but to know that the Lord is so close to me, to all of us, that he's handing it to you going, this doesn't win over you. This doesn't define you. This doesn't, this doesn't say who you are. This is not who you are. This is something you're going through. I'm handing it over to you. The battle is mine. I got you. Right. Like, yes, please. Right. Right. Yes, please. Yes, please. That I know that every challenge we face, every setback that we have, every trial, every scary moment simply is an opportunity. And we've said this along the way. We have said this statement is an opportunity to glorify God. It's an opportunity to see what the Lord is doing. And mm -hmm. we need to be we need to be bold in declaring that the battle belongs to the Lord so that the earth will know that there is a God in our life. So Amen. for for whoever's watching you or around you, sister friends and brother friends will know that there's a God in your life. Mm, that's good. And David did such an amazing job without even realizing that he was embodying that. Even when Saul tried to give him the armor, he was like, this is not, I can't wear this. Yeah. This doesn't feel good. This is too, in my mind, it was like too heavy. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it actually says that, but he's like, I can't, I can't wear this. Mm -hmm. Goes down to the river, picks up some stones and is like, ha, ah, I got, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. Like he knew the tools that God had given him throughout his entire life, that was going to continue to serve him. So taking on somebody else's was not going to serve him to do what he needed to do. Right. But and that, I think, is also part of the giant. We've decided that this giant has what we need because we can't do what we're supposed to do. But right. that's not, that it can't, the giant can't do that. It doesn't fit. It doesn't feel good. Right. And, you know, we're told to be strong and courageous, right? Mm hmm But, or, be, or even be bold. Mm hmm But just like you said, I can't be bold without the Lord. Mm-hmm. Because there's no boldness about me. You know what I mean? Like, no. There's no, I got this. Mm, some of the stuff that we, we can't say, I got this. So to be bold as your battle with the weapons of the Lord, like, the Lord's going to give you w wisdom. He's gonna, mm -hmm. He told you to trust him, lean on to your own understanding, that he will direct your path. And don't be wise in your own eyes. And to me, that's like, fire of God's gun of grace, right? Oh, yeah. Like, literally, you're going in with God's gun. Right. 
to shoot the ultimate enemy because you can't do it on yourself. And it has to be rooted in faith. Mm -hmm. Like you said, by myself, oh, I'm chicken little by myself. The sky is falling. I'm not going outside. Nope, not doing it. But you tell me, me and Jesus about to do something, then I'm feeling myself. <laughs> I did it. I have to be truthful. This the no, even even think about, let's pause for a second. Think about that one worship song, not the one that makes you cry, but the one you turn it up, you're like, yes, he wrote this for me. Mm-hmm. You you feel like you're high. What is it? Hype? I don't know if that's the right word. Mia mm-hmm. would probably cringe right now, but you get excited. Like, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're going to do it. I don't mean to, like, when you have that moment in your closet with the snot bubbles and everything, and you're just like, I can do this. I am going to get through this because God has shown it. Like, bing, he showed me I'm going to make it. And then, like, you just, your swag is different. You're like, ah. Oh, yeah. And you can't tell me the swag wasn't different in the Bible. I mean, because God fights our battles. Like, you can't, they knew it. They knew it. Crossing the Red Sea, Moses and the Israelites Mm -hmm. arrived at the shore of the Red Sea with, like, a full army in pursuit. And they cried out to the Lord, yeah. He led them. Like, here we are. Let's do that. Let's go. Um, You got uh, David and Goliath's battle, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, And you have uh, Jehoshaphat's battle. Um, where um, he said this, he said, who are the bold followers of God? Second Chronicles 17, six, tell us his heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. And, and literally that was a battle in itself. Mm-hmm. And he came, he was praising and worshiping facing mm-hmm. his fears. He proceeded to lead the people in prayer. He praised God for his great power and speak of the past work he had done on his behalf. Can you imagine? I'm fighting a battle with... Okay, Candace said another worship song. I'm praising a battle with prayer and praise. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just so you know this. Mark your calendar. So we can come in praying and praising him on this coming Saturday, the first Saturday of every month. We pray at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come on. Let's, let's fight the battles of March in prayer and praise because if king jehoshaphat could praise god for the things that he did so we can thank him what he did in february and january thank you for what he's done in other sister friends house and acknowledge the vast army you guys are my you guys are the army we're Mm -hmm. standing in the army of the lord with you guys but our eyes are on you our eyes are on the lord and what he's doing in our lives. And when our hearts are devoted to God, our response is, and this is just like uh, Jehoshaphat, seek God, fast, praise, and let's pray. And you've now taken that giant and now it's like a tiny little figurine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it holds no power. I feel like in my, again, in my mind, it's like you're, when you speak it out, you're you're making the giant bigger. Mm Mm-hmm. Like you give, we all know the power of the tongue brings life and death. And I think that goes for all things. If I'm speaking into something, oh man, I just can't. Oh, this is going to be it. Well then, yeah, no, I just can't. And that's going to be the end. Right. I'm speaking into it. But if I stop speaking into it, where's it going to, it's going to deflate. Where's it going to go? Yeah. And then, like you just said, if I stop speaking into it and then I pivot and I start praying and praising the victory that's already going to come, a giant is insignificant. Then it becomes a space for God to move. Mm-hmm. So we stepping up in this like this, Candace. The victory belongs to the Lord. Psalms, mm-hmm. Psalms 21, 31. Victory rests in the Lord. Yeah. First John 5, 4. For everyone born in God overcomes the world. This is a victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Deuteronomy 24, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight with you against your enemies to give you victory. Yeah, what else you need? Like, that's another punch. Here's one more. Here's one more punch. Knock the joker out. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to the Lord. He gives us victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Knocked him out. Now, maybe you in the ring. I'm pretending like I'm in a boxing ring now. Like, maybe you in the ring and you just felt like you got knocked out and you just, like, how am I going to get back up? Proverbs 24, 16 says, For though the righteous man may fall seven times, he will rise again. Get back. I'm rising again. Right. And then here's one more. Here's one just like you got back up, you're on your feet, you're bobbing and weaving, you're still stunned from that thing. Second Corinthians 4, 8 and 6. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, not perplexed, but in, not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, and not destroyed. I like that one. That one was a song. But we're not, we're not perplexed, we're not crushed, we're not despair. We up. We are on our feet, ready. And that was Second Corinthians four. <laughs> yes, Second Corinthians four, eight and nine. Okay. So, our battles will bring stress into our life, but knowing the power and the victory of the Lord in our lives mean that we're not crushed. We're not. It can't crush us, nor leave us in despair, nor forsake us. And guess what? It ain't even gonna destroy us. How about that? Right. Get back up. Get up. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Get up. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Again, and that's the we get to be excited. Like, yes, giants, they're giants, but but they're not God. They're not God. And if there's any opportunity to see God move, you gotta take that giant and hand it over. Mm-hmm. and confront it. And you don't have to confront it wondering what's going to happen because you know what's going to happen. You're victorious. Mm-hmm. Fact. In the scripture, truth. But what else is going to happen is you are going to show somebody to how to get back up. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen is your kids are going to see you, your spouse is going to see you, your coworkers are going to see you. they be like, she's still swinging. Yeah, she is. Yep. She's still swinging. She's still praying. She's still praising. She's still loving She's still showing up. She's still moving. She's still worshiping. Yes, she is. That giant does not get to take root in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then when another one comes, you just side eye and go, eh, mm-hmm. I know how to get you. Yes. Because I'm going to let God fight my battles. Mm-hmm. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You just have to be still. Yeah. And, and you know, this, even in the walking by faith, cause I, you know, maybe we've sugarcoated faith this whole month. It's easy, <laughs> but it's not. Battles are mm-hmm. part of our everyday personal experiences. Sin entered, entered our world and continues to bring havoc on marriages and families and churches and finances and health. You can put your name on that, but as followers of Christ, we have a promise that we will never be alone in our battles and he can use them for the good, for good growth, good change, good surrender and good warrior skills. So don't, don't think because you're in a battle, you got to feel the shame. Don't think if you're in that battle and you still haven't come totally clean out, don't hide. God is doing something. He's going to use it for his good. It is going to benefit the Lord. It is that you still have been promised eternal life. Like, come on now. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we fight our battles with God. At one side, he'll give us, he is going to get the glory and the honor. And we get to hold our heads up and say, I'm a child of God. I'm fearfully Mm -hmm. and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his words. My days are predestined. God's got me. The outcome is always what he's planned, that I have eternal life. Think about that. Amen. So, and that's huge. That is. Don't be afraid to say you're in a battle. There's mm-hmm. no shame in that. I think Teresa and I both sit here talking to y'all right now going, yeah, I got a battle today. Yeah. <laughs> today. But that doesn't stop him from using us. Right. That doesn't stop him from, from us wanting to be with him. Don't let that battle stifle you. You know, you don't yeah. have to clean up and look real nice before God uses you. Again, that's a lie. Uh, yeah that's a lie let that battle 
work you the way God intended it to be, not what you think the battle should be doing, if that makes any sense. Like that battle's gonna work you for sure, but let it work you how God says so. Yeah. What is it refining? What are those impurities? What is that growth? What is that revelation? Because if you think you haven't heard God's voice before, you gonna hear him in the middle of a battle. Oh, that's for sure. For sure. And shoot, I'm a, I know this. I know this. Get your sister friends and tell them to get in the ring. Because mm-hmm. we're going to knock him out. We're going to knock him out with the promises of God. We're going to knock him out with the verses that God has given us. We're going to knock him out knowing that we can rest in the promises and the truth to get us through the battle. We're getting in the ring with you. Yep. And these sister friends, us, is, we don't even need the details. Irrelevant. It's significant. I mean, if you want to share, just to share, that's fine. That's fine. But if you don't, that's also fine. That is not important. No. Ring up the sister friend back phone. Call us in there. That's all I need to know. I just need to know what time. What time you need us to show up? Yes. There's we a, praying oh. in the morning? Are we praying at night? Are we making cards? What are we doing? We pray. Yes. We're going to pray all around the clock. We're going to pray with you. Like that yeah. sound. Jesus on the main line. Sister friends on the main other, on the other main line. Call Fast. them up and tell them what we we praying. Yes. We're going. The Lord will go before you and fight for you and your sister friends are on the side with you. He is going to lead the way into the battle and we're going to be right there. In the box. Yeah. Just... He's given us the courage, the strength, and the wisdom, and the knowledge to help us take the next step. Mm-hmm. That's walking by faith, not by sight, because I don't know what there is to see. I don't know. I don't know. What did you say this morning, Candace, about our senses before we wrap this one up? Oh, I said that our senses, we have five senses, and sight is is numero uno. If you had to, like, rate them and the whole scientific blur behind it. But I always thought it was interesting that we walk by faith, not by sight. And after our sight is a hearing. That hearing actually is such a large component of how we interact with the world. And so when the verses that we read in First John says that the Lord hears us, he hears us. So when we think he doesn't, he hears us. And that is the sense that allows you to know someone probably, not even probably, scientifically more intimately than seeing them. Because a person can change their physical appearance so many ways. But your, your voice, you can't change your voice. You can't change your accent. You can't change those things. Mm-hmm. So how you sound is how you are truly identified. Mm. So it just like blew my mind to think that God hears us. He knows each single one of our individual voices and responds to them as we need him to respond. Mm. Like, like think about for those of us that are moms, you know your kids cry over a room full of a hundred different cries. Yep. You know your baby. You don't even have to be looking at your baby. You would know that was your baby. Mm-hmm. By sound, by hearing them. So it just, again, God is so smart <laughs> of how he designed us and how and if we just took the time to look at how he made us so intentionally. Yeah. That's faith. That's faith that he made us this way to glorify him and love him and to be victorious. How can I not be victorious when God made me so amazing? Right. Come on now. Right. So true. But here it here it is that we're in this battle, right? And we acknowledge that. And and what's important is this, that we declare, because what we talked about this morning, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, is that we earnestly, earnestly seek him and we're asking, we're coming to him. And here we get to declare what we want from the Lord in prayer, because it's about let his will be done in our lives. And his will is that he gives us courage, that he gives us strength, that he gives us wisdom, and he gives us knowledge. And that's what we're going to do. Let's declare that. Lord, give me the strength. Give me the courage to walk this out. Give me the wisdom for things that I don't even know. And give me the knowledge to to whatever it is that you've called me into. Like, that's what we get to ask. And now let the Lord's will be done in my life because that's eternal life. Because when we get the courage, the strength, and the wisdom, and the knowledge, that's going to be 
that's going to be our, our road to eternal life because we know that all comes from the Lord, but we have to declare it. And it says, um, um, even in that declaring it, that you speak about it. We got to speak about it. We, we don't want to fight our battles any other way. Any other way. We're earnestly seeking the Lord. We're praying and we're asking. And we're asking the Lord's will be done and that he will be glorified. Because mm -hmm. even if you think about David and, and Goliath, David did not have the strength. Even what he did, he did not have the strength to knock the giant down. Mm -mm. Think about that. He you did. may not have the strength. Not at all. Not at all. And you think but about it. He was it. confident in God mm -hmm. that if God called him to the situation, why would he not be mm -hmm. victorious? And if you think about it, he had the right weapon. Mm -hmm. Do you have the right weapon fighting the battle? Or I know this, the right weapon and the word of faith in our mouth is it. It's going to be defeated. We have the Lord. When Goliath started coming towards David, he didn't run away. We don't have to run. We don't have to run because the Lord just filled us up with courage, with strength, with wisdom and knowledge to help us with the next step. And the next step ain't backing up. Mm -mm. He even knows who to call to get in the ring with you. Because mm -hmm. he already got them around you. He ran towards him instead with confidence that the Lord was going to deliver him into his hands. So here's my question for the week. What giant do you have in your life that you are afraid of confronting? Let's confront them today. And let's pray that the Lord instills in us courage and boldness to face the giants of our life. And let's pray that the Lord grant us victory over the giant in our life. Mm -hmm. And it tells us, pray for all things and watch him work. Let the Holy Spirit lead you and praise, praise and worship him for what he has done and what he can do. Take refuge in the hope. We talked about it in another podcast. Faith, hope, and love. Take mm -hmm. refuge in that. And you need faith the size of a mustard seed for God that loves you. And we have the Lord. Let God fight for you and know that the battle is already won. One, one, <laughs> the battle's already won. So all we can say to you is, can we get ready to close this one out, Candace? Is blessings in the battle? Mm -hmm. Ain't that that sounds so crazy? Blessings in the battle, sister friend, because he's given us courage and strength and wisdom and knowledge to help us for every step that we take. Mm -hmm. So that's nothing but blessings in the battle. That's a whole nother way, another perspective to look at it. Hmm. That's good. Yep, that's good. good. So I pray that you are blessed by this podcast as Candace gets ready to pray us out. And if you need another sister friend to jump in, call Candace. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, you can. You can call me. Yes, call us. I'm just kidding with her because yes. it's, it's late in the evening. Call us. <laughs> <laughs> call us, and we're gonna get in the ring, and we're gonna be swinging. We might not. We might be hitting air, fighting air, but we swinging. And you know what? And we want you in the ring with us, and we're fighting two our battles because we can swing together. The more, the marriage. 
Iron sharpens iron. Remember that. Don't do this alone. Don't do this alone. We've told you that over and over. I don't know how many times I have to tell you that, <laughs> but let's right. do it. Let's do it. And we've said it before, and I, I feel like people say things and they just say things, but like we mean it. Yep. And if you don't believe us, try it. Yep. What you got to lose? Yep. Try it. We will respond. We will pray. We will be just. I know right now there's someone that probably rolled their eyes and be like, no, they wouldn't. Yes, we will. Girl, I, I want to be in a fight with the devil. I'm going to help him. Try I'm going to help you. What, do you. what do you have to lose? Nothing. The worst that could happen is you would get two extra people praying for you. Come on. I know. It's going to be good. So there you go. That's, that's the battle. And if that's the battle you are actually fighting, here's your word. Stop it. Yes. And come on. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Blessings in the battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Heavenly you. Father. Blessings in the battle. <laughs> Only you, Father. Only you. Only you can that be something that even makes sense. To know that the battle truly belongs to you. And I pray mm -hmm. that as your children were listening to this this message and they were they were reflecting they're definitely reflecting on the giant that's in front of them the one that they need to confront the one that they feel has been holding them down i pray that they have a, a sense of of almost anticipation of what that confrontation will look like what it means to pull out those scriptures what it means to get that worship cry song what it means to step forward and look at that giant in the face and go not today not today. You are not as big as my mind is making you out to be because my God will always be bigger. I pray that they are so focused that they have discernment to realize not every battle is theirs and that they look at the things that aren't their battle and they set it down. They look at the things that are not serving them and they put them down because every battle is not ours, but all of the battles belong to you. Mm. You will tell us how to get in the ring, where to get in the ring, ring what to be armored with and who to be in the ring with us father so we thank you because of our faith we can do that because of our faith we there's plenty of songs that said i'm not worried about tomorrow because i can look at that giant in the face and go god and i are here we are here and you will not defeat me you are not my maker you are not the authority you are no author and finisher of my life but god is so I pray that we have a power stance. I pray that we come boldly and confidently. And for that sister friend who feels like her knees are scraped and her elbows are bumped and bruised, that's okay. You will heal. Get up. Get up and let's keep fighting. So we thank you for your word. We thank you that we get to do this together. We do. It sounds crazy, but we thank you for the giants. It gives us an opportunity to press into you, to love on you, to be with you, and to see you move in only the way that you can. In Jesus' name we pray. It shall be. Amen. Amen. See you next week right here on A Cup of Soul. And remember, blessings in the storm. Blessings in the battle. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.